Yo guys, what is up? This is Scammers from Minidocs coming back at you again with another Discord Top Pie episode, and today we're doing episode 23. And we're gonna be making an eval command, and we're gonna be doing it on Bot Top Pie, right out of cock. <laughs> Big day. But anyway, before we start off, we're gonna actually start off by making the methods we need, one of which is clean underscore code, and we're gonna put that in the util.py file. I've gone ahead and made it already, so I can talk you through it just because I found. Uh, while previously recording this, that talking my way through this, uh, just because there's a lot of splicing and things, it didn't quite work out so well. So you're going to want to go ahead and make this code here, and pretty much what it does is it just checks that the code we give it uh, isn't in a code block, and if it isn't a code block, get rid of it. Because Discord's got their markdown, like this is a code block here, that doesn't fly well with Python, that's not Python compliant. So we're going to get rid of that, and that just cleans it up so that we can actually execute the code, you know, when we need to, all of that. So this checks if it starts with these and ends with these, because that signifies a code block. It splits it up onto new line characters, and then it gets rid of the first and pretty much last ones, so that it is all executable and all good, and then just rejoins it as a string separated by new line characters, so that we can execute it with what we're going to be using now. And that is a command, at bot.command, name is going to be eval, alias is, is going to be equal to exec, and at bot, uh, commands dot is underscore owner, I'm just going to take the code, and then the code is just going to be equal to that clean underscore code, we'll give it the code. Now I've already def I've already defined these imports at the top of my file. Um, all the imports we already need I've already defined. We need context lib, we need IO, we need text wrap, um, and then you also need to import clean code, and that should be all for this episode. Um, but it'll throw those errors if you don't have them. Anyway, we also want some variables, so we're going to be setting up a variable scope, and so pretty much what this means is we can use them. So we can use CTX we can use discord, we can use commands. And that just saves us having to physically import them in our code. Um, same goes for when we write the actual uh, function itself, just because you know we're making it convenient for the end user. So anyway, local underscore variables is going to be a dictionary of variables. And so what do we want? We want discord. It doesn't matter what you name this, I'm just naming them the same thing just because that makes it really nice and easy on us. For instance, I could name bot um, to Dave and then do dave.config and it would be the same as doing bot.config. Um, but that's personal preference. Anyway, and then I want channel to be equal to ctx.channel. I'll explain this after I'm done. Um, It'll become more obvious once I've actually done these parts uh, because you'll be able to run the code yourself and see what's going on. And it's pretty much those local variables we want. So I want to be able to do just print channel and it'll just print ctx.channel for me to save me actually having to get ctx.channel. Um, anyway, next up we actually need to emulate standard out. So standard out is the thing that pops up when you print. So you print. You go print hello world on your console it says hello world now i want to send standard out to discord how do we do that we're going to create a string io object which is essentially a text stream uh an in-memory text buffer to be precise and that has the opportunity for us to get the value of it so you know as a human when you print something it pops up on console and you can read it string io here is doing that same thing but for the computer we can call get value and that will read it to it Anyway, we're going to go ahead and try accept this because, <laughs> believe it or not, code can error. Um, and then we're going to go with contextlib.redirect standard out. And we're going to give it standard out. This is straight out file. And so that'll redirect it. So that handles setting and unsetting it for you. So you don't have to worry about stuffing it up and then your program, like, not working. Uh, so it's just something nice. And then we're going to be calling exit on this. And pretty much this just executes dynamically created programs, which can be, you know, 
strings of code or code objects and we're just going to be doing a string ourselves and this will take three parameters so the code um, some globals and some locals globals and locals are like the variables um, and they let you limit the scope so as you have a variable scope here this is also a variable scope so you can have a variable scope for execution where you can disable the built-ins um, by setting a dictionary of local variables and we can go ahead and we can just go underscore built-ins and now you can't use math or square root or anything when we pass it through but I do like having those so we're going to keep them there and we're going to continue on with our code so it's going to be an string we're going to go async def I'm just going to call it func uh, new line and then we're going to put our code in but we're going to go text wrap dot indent and we're going to give it the code and we're going to indent it by four spaces and so essentially all we're doing here is you know we've split it on new lines but we need to make sure that you know it's indented because python complains if i do this um that's a that's a syntax error for python so text wrapped up and then pretty much just handles that for us um so you don't have to worry about the code being stuffed up due to indentation and that's just something quite nice and then we're going to give our local variables here which is just something I explained before. And now, the problem with exec is it executes it, but it doesn't return the values. It doesn't return anything. And I do occasionally, you know, like returning things. So the way we do that is we're going to go obj oh, okay, as a variable name, this object is await local variables, our function, and we're just going to execute it. So essentially, this is going to be putting yourself into local variables and then we can go ahead and run it and then this will actually give us a return value believe it or not and the re result of running this is just going to be an string and so we can do that standard out dot get value which lets us read uh, like you're reading the console when you print hello world this is just down on the computer here's that hello world code and then we're just going to have the return value as well really nicely in there, new line character, and this is also going to be an embed, because why not, it's actually going to be a paginated session, but but on that once we get to it, except, exception, as E, we're going to go ahead, yes that's generic, but you know when your code breaks, you do want to know what the result is, so we're just going to join, we're going to format, underscore exception, I didn't import that, there you go, traceback.format, exception, and that's something else you need. So this, given um, the error, will actually let you format it. Uh, trace back, there we go, problem solved. So if we hover over this in PyCharm, you can see that it takes a type, it takes a value, and then also takes traceback. So we're giving it that, it formats a stack trace and the exception information, yada yada yada, you'll see in a minute. All right, so let's just go ahead and you remember episode 20 when we did that custom help command? Page node help command? Yeah. So we're gonna make it we're gonna make one of those. Except for code. Cool. Didn't import that one either. Yes, sir. That is what I want. And then the timeout is just gonna be hundred seconds. Let's let's use uh, let's use the defaults, I think. Let's get syntax right as well. Argument equals default parameter. Uh, so it turns out you don't actually need uh, that. And now we're going to split this up because code can return more than 2,000 characters and Discord only handles up to 2,000 characters, which is why we're paginating it. So if you do return over 2,000 characters, you can go between the pages. I'll try erase that, um, but no promises. But anyway, we're just going to go from i, and then i plus 2,000, and then we're going to go for i in range, start at zero, go up to the length of result, and then go 2000. Length is going to be equal to one. The prefix is going to be dot 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 pi boom. And then we are going to whack in another comma because I keep forgetting my commas right now. 
and then the suffix is just going to do this, that way we can put it in a code block ourselves, let's get rid of that since that's the default, and then we can just go ahead and go await pager.start, and we'll give it ctx, and this code should run. Let's go ahead, let's run the bot, let's see if we actually got this right. Still looking good. So we've got at menu.py. I can't remember the prefix, which is why I love this. And then we can go help. Let's see if we can't find the eval command in here. Hopefully it's registered correctly. There we go, eval command. Eval print pi. Bam. So that's returning the standard output. So you can see that you're printing it, and rather than going to your actual console, it's coming here. But you can also go eval return hi, and that'll do that. Now let's go ahead and let's let's see if we can't make it go over the character. Well, actually, first let's go int, and then let's give it an a, uh, a d, <laughs> so we can see the formatted trace back. Look at that. So I'll wait local variable swag. Invalid literal for base 10, so you can't convert this to an integer. And it's paginated so we can end these as well. Now let's see if we can't somehow paginate this. Python. And then what are we gonna do? X equals this combination I for I in range two thousand five hundred for underscore and x print underscore possibly not let's go ahead let's give that another go uh, actually let's just go ahead and go eval copy that and then let's just go for i in right get my syntax right for i in range print i run that unexpected EOF while passing ah all right sweet let's jump under here let's just take a quick look at this see if i have stuffed anything up in our line of code here just move this over like this. No. Looks fine. Um, so what that's telling me is it's just the bot playing up. And you can't do certain stuff like this. So I'm just going to go ahead and pause for a minute. Find something to trip up the paginator. And I'll be back in a second. Sweet. So I've gone ahead and just had a look at this. And it's actually our clean code function. The one that I didn't write. Um while well, on the episode, but you just need to chuck an else in there rather than simply just returning and that should fix all of your issues. <laughs> on the spot debugging right there. Anyway, let's go ahead, let's run this again and prove to you that that was in fact the problem. So actually let's just copy and paste this. <sighs> this doesn't work. Yeah, I was going to say if this doesn't work, I'm going to be in no I'm going to be <laughs> in the outhouse. So you can see here that it's gone ahead, it's printed them all, and it's returned more than 2,000 characters, so it's gone ahead, it's paginated that for us, and look at that, boom. Fully paginated output. What more could you possibly want? Although, we do need to talk about security here. Because although we do have it behind its owner, if you decide you want to share this with your friends or anyone in your Discord, don't let them lure you into a false sense of security. Um, also, by the way, uh, that's all the code for the episode, so if that's all you're hanging around for, that's it. But I'm just going to spend a couple minutes talking about security here. So, this is an eval. This is an open eval into your environment, into your system. So, for example, let me demonstrate. So, if you give anyone access, um, it's it's pretty dangerous. So we're gonna go for i and uh, for item in os dot Now, even though I haven't set this, 
as an environment variable, as a local variable. So it's not defined um, because it's not a variable that we've set. If I set, um, let me just minimize that. If I set OS in here, this would work fine. Um, but I didn't. But you can mitigate that by importing OS here. And then look, you've just gained access to my entire entire folder here. Uh, this is this is PyCharm hence hence the virtual environment and stuff. Um, actually, I've just run this on Pyro. I just realised rather than the actual bot. Um, so psych. Um, let me just <laughs> run this on the Menudox one, uh, so I can actually show you the file directory. But you can see here we've got a good and all. We've got an idea file. We've got a bot. We've got a cogs. And see, see, that's exactly the false. It's like this is security. Like, I don't even have access to Pyro. Like, I physically don't have access to the Pyro VPS. But look at that. I've just, I've just explored the VPS on Pyro. And if you wanted to, as a security thing, like, let's say, like, like, let's say, oh, cool. Um. Sure, you're stuck inside the bot's environment. What harm could you do? Um, well, you could do a lot of harm. For instance, let me just make this a string. I just want to show you this. So, a dot dot is to go up a level. Well, we've just gone up a level. What's that? Mandrock, go, apps. So, if you give someone access to your evil command, given how we've set it up in this episode, the security isn't there. This is why it's uh, an is owner thing and would highly recommend keep it that way or only to people you trust because you have full access to do whatever you want with code if you can do it with code on your computer they can do it in your email well almost anything so it's something to keep in mind in saying that though you can make it more secure you can block out things you can use global variables and all of that look into exact some more um such as here so you've got object, you've got globals, you've got locals. We're only using a couple of those. You can look into more, you can secure it. You can use something called Sneakbox from the Python Discord, which is an a, like a closed off API box um, to run code. And that's like virtualized, containerized and things. But just be aware that the evil command, as fun as it sounds, can be easily exploited if you don't set it up right, if you give it out to people. Um, but yeah, it's other than that, really fun. Um, so I would recommend setting it up, playing around with it, having fun. Just keep it to yourself, though. Don't uh, take it off as owner. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. That's all. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.